Hello and welcome to another historic video here on the official MTG Arena channel. Today we're taking a look at one of the decks submitted for the Arena Championship 6 Finals, which are happening this weekend live on Twitch. And this deck is right up my alley, a deck I wanted to try myself, but Alexander already put in all the work and built the deck for us. This is a Jeskai Torpor Orb Doorkeeper Thrall deck. So Torpor Orb great in this meta, as it can shut down the various energy decks, which rely on a lot of Enter the Battlefield abilities. Doorkeeper Thrall is a very similar effect, stapled onto a 1-2 creature with Flash, so you can also play it in the opponent's end step. And then we want to combine it with cards like Flage, Titan of Fire's Fury, which now doesn't need to be sacrificed when we play it, and instead we get to keep the 6-6 Elder Giant on the battlefield, and then when it attacks it can still deal 3 damage to any targets and gain 3 life, and we even have Arena of Glory in our mana base, so we can potentially exert the Arena, so we can immediately attack with Flage when we play it, to still immediately get that 3 damage and gain 3. And then another creature that's excellent alongside Thrill and Torpor Orb is Null Drifter. That's the big advantage to splashing a bit of blue in this deck, as we now get to cast Null Drifter with Evoke. We still get to draw two cards, since it's a cast trigger and not an ETB effect. And then when Null Drifter enters the battlefield, we no longer need to sacrifice it to the Evoke trigger, and instead we get to keep the 4-4 flyer with Annihilator 1 on the battlefield. And then once again we have our Arena to potentially give our Null Drifter haste, so we can immediately start annihilating the opponent's board. So that's the core combo of the deck. And then to round things out, we have some nice control elements, a bit of energy as well here with Galvanic Discharge, which is a great removal spell. And then to the narrative can also give us a bit of energy to maybe power up our Wrath of the Skies as a powerful sweeper that can deal with artifacts, creatures, and enchantments if we pay the right amount of energy. Now we do have to watch out that we don't blow up our own Torpor Orb, so sometimes it is worth holding the Torpor Orb until after we Wrath if we know that it's happening. And then we've got a bit more removal with Lightning Helix. Can also combine the damage from Lightning Helix and maybe the damage from our own Flage to take care of an opposing Flage. Because of course playing Torpor Orb in a meta where Flage is popular can be a double-edged sword, as the opponent now also gets to keep their Flage on the battlefield. So having ways of answering it is still important. And then a Fragment Reality, another flexible removal spell, especially nice if you answer a 1-drop, as the opponent's unlikely to get a replacement card out of it. And then we've got a bit of card advantage with Expressive Iteration, another payoff for playing the Jeskai Colors. And then a Lorien Revealed can draw three cards in the late game, but we can also Island Cycle it early to maybe fix our colors, as we can get our various dual lands and even tri lands. We've got the full set of Aragrin Trium, which also has the Mountain type, so we can have our Arena enter untapped if we control Aragrin Trium. That's also why we see three Steam Vents and four Sacred Foundry, more Mountains for Arena. And then Hallowed Fountain we can also maybe search up with our Lorien Revealed, or a Meticulous Archive if we want to surveil one. Can also maybe help fill the graveyard to escape Flage if it did somehow end up in our graveyard. And then we've got a couple basics, as well as a Hall of the Storm Giants as another threat in our mana base, which can turn into a 7-7. And then the sideboard was also included. We have Dovin's Veto as an uncounterable counterspell for non-creature spells, so it shines against control and combo. We've got Surgical Extraction to stop any graveyard shenanigans, more Fragment Realities, Dream Trawler can single-handedly win the game against control, especially if the opponent took out all their sweepers. And then we've got a Divine Purge as another versatile sweeper that can deal with creatures and artifacts. Mapping the maze can be a nice way to get back a multicolored spell and maybe provide a bit of extra card advantage. And then change the equation, another versatile counter spell. So yeah, that's the deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw, missing red mana, although we do have both Thrill and Torpor Orb to set up Null Drifter. Can't really tell what our opponent's playing, there's no companion. I think we still give this a try, and then on the draw especially, we should be able to find our third lane. Opponent with an authority of the consoles, so they might be on a more controlling variant. We can just play Hall for now, even though we won't be able to play Helix on two. And then we found our red mana, so could tap out for Torpor Orb. Problem there is if our opponent has their own Flage, they can keep it on the battlefield. So maybe I prefer end of turn Thrall, but then if they have instant speed removal, they can still interfere. So it's a close call. I think for now I'm going for end of turn Thrall to avoid an opposing Flage from staying in play. And yeah, opponent fires off Flage on 3. 
So they could have more in hand. But in the meantime, we'll get an old drifter going. So that sounds fine to me. We still get to draw two cards, and then we don't have to sacrifice our old drifter. So that was pretty awesome. And then next turn we can maybe try Rune Flage, depending on whether or not the Thrall's still there. Alright, opponent's got Karn. So they are definitely trying to lock us out of the game. We'll see what they get. The One Ring. Okay. So I think think it's reasonable to Lightning Helix Karn instead of attacking it, because if Null Drifter attacks Karn, then opponent would just sacrifice it, so it feels like a bit of a waste. But uh, yeah, I guess her opponent has already seen enough. This Annihilator trigger is going to be too much for the opponent to handle. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, missing a Torpor Orb effect, but we already have Null Drifter, some removal. Yeah, we'll try it. Play Arena 1. And then at turn two we can Lightning Helix if necessary. Can always just draw two with an old Rifter. And our opponent on a live game deck with Speaker. Alright, we found our Thrall, perfect. Might even be able to set up an ambush on the 1-1 one -one if it attacks. That would be perfect. Assuming there's no interaction. That worked. And now a Bishop of Wings. So that Enter the Battlefield ability is also not going to trigger with Thrall in play. So this game's going about as well as it could have. We have a 4 4 flying with Annihilator 1 on the battlefield. And we've got some nice removal in hand. Can play another Null Drifter. So our opponent's in trouble. A Righteous Valkyrie. Doesn't gain any life. Just a 2-4 flyer. And yeah, opponent's gonna need to sacrifice something to the Null Drifter. Can uh, start there. And that's good enough for a concession. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. We've got a pretty generic control hand here with some card draw, some removal. No real combo pieces to enact our own game plan. So, not sure if we're supposed to keep hands like these, because we are still kind of a combo deck at the end of the day. But uh, I'll try it out for science. At least we'll have plenty of energy for Galvanic Discharge. And we are up against the Boros deck. Found Torpor Orb, that will be pretty useful. So most likely gonna take out the Ocelot, but we'll see if anything scarier shows up. Opponent is just going to move to attackers. And yeah, the Ocelot we cannot really stop with Torpor Orb. So I'm happy to take it out. Whereas a lot of the other creatures in the energy deck can get shut down by the orb. So we can just play it right now. They could still have the enchantment static prison, which can exile our artifact. So that's the main concern. Opponent revitalizing, so they have a bigger life gain theme than maybe your typical energy deck. And yeah, Guide of Souls is not going to trigger with Torpor Orb in play. If they have energy, they can still maybe grow one of their creatures, but it's going to be harder to get that energy. And Flage was perfect, so we can play that right now and keep it on the battlefield. Now, of course, we don't get to deal 3 damage right away. But still happy to have the 6-6 six, six Elder Giants ready to attack next turn. Opponent's got Tarun, makes sense. But we do have Galvanic Discharge plus 2 in the narrative to get enough energy going. Plus just attacking and then discharging for 3 damage would be enough to clear a path. But uh, let me start with 2 in the narrative, see what we find. Okay, can uh, tune again. Could also play the Archive first. Maybe that'll put a land on the bottom or in the graveyard. 
a Lightning Helix. Yeah, I guess that could be a fine draw still. It's no Null Drifter, admittedly, but if our opponent plays another Flage next turn, it's a way for us to maybe clear a path. So for now we can just discharge and deal 6 to Flage, so we can also take out the Guide of Souls. Although by taking out the guide, we're also maybe putting more cards in their graveyard, making it easier to escape. But that's why we kept Lightning Helix, so we can take care of a 6-6 once again. So yeah, cards we're hoping to find. Null Drifter is at the top of our list. And then any other card draw, like maybe an Expressive Iteration would be fine. A Lorian Revealed can draw three. One's got a Jenny, but it's not going to make a cat token. And now an Amped Raptor also doesn't have a great effect, and we actually top deck Null Drifter. Well, things are going pretty well for us. So, can maybe start by evoking Null Drifter. Probably won't need another Torpor Orb. Although Wrath of the Skies can also clear both of the opponent's creatures. Would, I guess, also clear our Torpor Orb. So, yeah, let's just uh, attack for now. And then... Could just take out a Jani in case they find a way to transform it by playing another cat. Opponent takes it. Could have also considered using Helix on the Raptor, so they take six as opposed to them being able to chump. Opponent's got another Flage, that's fine. So now Helix plus an attack can take care of it. And the Raptor attack kind of implies that they have their own uh, Galvanic Discharge here, which only deals 3 damage. So we'll take it, that way I can Lightning Helix, clear Flage, and win the game next turn with 10 damage. Do you want to make sure to go to attackers first, on the off chance that it's a different removal spell. And then deal 3 to Flage. I guess we can let the Annihilator trigger Resolve in case they decide to sacrifice Flage. And then Lightning Helix before blockers. And hopefully that's game and our opponent explodes. Awesome! On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Halurus as companion, so likely a lower curve energy deck. So Thrall's gonna be great. Problem is, two tap lands, won't be able to play it until turn three, potentially. I think we still keep since we have the discharge, and then Thrall plus Flage is kind of where we want to be in this matchup. And then now we can maybe play Thrall on turn two, which also shuts down Soul Warden. And an Ocelot, sorry, that will make a token right away. So potentially something we need to discharge. If I try and flash and throw, and our opponent has their own Galvanic Discharge, they can take it out before blockers, and then they get to keep making more tokens with the Ocelot, which is pretty scary. Although the highest upside is, of course, throw into Flage. But our opponent not having another play here, keeping up a mana, makes me... Pretty suspicious that they have a Galvanic Discharge. Given that we have another Thrall, maybe it's still worth giving it a shot here. So we can pass a turn. And I can always reconsider and decide to discharge the Ocelot instead. But then I would have been better off playing another Tap Trium. Hoping they find some 1-drop that they're forced to tap out for. Opponent's going to attack first. So yeah, they likely have a Galvanic Discharge. I guess I can wait until they tap out for another Ocelot here. That way I get to keep Thrall on the battlefield for Flage at least. But it does mean they get to gain more life here. Maybe our opponent's afraid of a Sweeper and they don't commit the extra Ocelot. No, nope, opponent casts it. Alright, so now we can flash and throw so Soul Warden doesn't gain life. 
but they will still get a lot of cat tokens, so that's still a bit of an issue. Now I can play Flage with haste thanks to Arena of Glory, so that was a nice top deck. So I need to make sure to tap correctly, exert, play Flage, and attack, and take out an Ocelot. Now we know they'll have an answer to the Thrall, but we've got another one. And then hopefully Flage can keep up. Yeah, there's the Discharge we suspected. And an Ajani, that's bad news, because now they also get to copy the 2-1 cat token from Ajani. So yeah, this game could have turned out a little differently had we just prioritized taking out the Ocelots. But then we also wouldn't have had a Flage in play. But now we might just be too far behind, points going very wide. We can take out a Jani with a Flage trigger. And then if our opponent tries to quadruple block, we can still use Galvanic Discharge and have a Thrall available. So we have some options. Opponent's just gonna take it, makes sense. So we're at 12, opponent has how much damage coming in? 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. If I take 2 to keep up Discharge and play Thrall, I can um, block the Ocelot, take out a 2-1. 10, let's see, 7, 8, 9, 10, I would take 10 damage exactly. So that's no good. If I decide to play Flage, that uh, doesn't really save me either. So I think we're dead if our opponent attacks all out here. But maybe they won't put the Ocelot in harm's way. Nope, opponent commits. Our opponent had another discharge anyway, so makes sense. Okay, GG's. Close one here, but yeah, shows that even with one of these Torpor Orb effects in play, they can still potentially win with Ocelot Pride getting out of hand. But uh, in this case, it was mostly the combination of Ocelot Pride with uh, a Jani as well, making all those two ones. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a very controlling hand, double discharge and wrath. Could work out. We've got Torpor Orb, so as soon as we find Flage or Null Drifter, we're in business. And then against an unknown opponent, I'm still gonna keep up Galvanic Discharge here. Opponent on Wizards or just Blue Red Control. Tamiyo seems fine to take out. And then Arena will enter untapped. And Balmor's next, so it does point towards a wizard deck. So Wrath might end up taking out my own Torpor Orb, which is a little awkward. But I still want to get to double white in play. And then I could discharge Balmor right now, before they can maybe pump its toughness somehow. Yeah, the problem is we're not really doing much else in the meantime. So let me wait and see what else our opponent does. Unstable amulet, that's fine. I'll just take one if they attack for one. And a Symmetry Sage. So now Wrath is looking a little bit better. So I could Wrath the entire board. Opponent would still be able to activate Amulet to get a card in exile to cast. Let me take my turn and see what we find. Lightning Helix. Alright, so now we've got some more spot removal so I can keep Torpor Orb on the battlefield. And then now it's maybe not a bad idea to take out something like Symmetry Sage before they get a chance to trigger it a bunch. Although Wrath 
for x equals 1 or 1 energy could take care of Symmetry Sage, whereas um, maybe they'll deploy more 1-drops. So let me try and take out Balmor. And then hope they deploy more 1-drops so we can keep our Torpor Orb while wrathing all their creatures away. Right, Flame of Anor makes sense. So now at least we don't feel bad about Wrathing for two. But there was potentially a reason to make sure they didn't have any wizards on the battlefield, so they could only choose one mode. But yeah, now I'm going to be more patient, wait for them to overextend, and then Wrath. Flage isn't bad. Won't stay on the battlefield, though. Could still take out a Symmetry Sage. Yeah, given that our opponent's got a full grip, it's going to be a while before we can... Uh, get a Flage or Null Drifter going, so it's going to be a longer game. Could be fine to just play Flage. I'm going to be patient. Since we're still at 17, can maybe afford to let the opponent deploy a few more creatures before we Wrath, and then we might find another Torpor Orb or Thrall. And Raptor makes sense. So it's a bit of an energy and wizard hybrid. Raptor found Sink into Stupor, that's a bit of a nombo. And now Reckless Charge. So I could Galvanic Discharge so I don't take any damage off uh, Amped Raptor. If I take 8 we fall to 9, next turn I can Wrath. Still have Flage to gain life though, so I think this is acceptable. Although they will still get an extra card from Unstable Amulet. And we found Thrall. So now, all of a sudden, I could just go Thrall plus Flage, keep it on the battlefield, but then an opposing Discharge can still deal with Flage. So it's kind of tricky. I think I have to Wrath now for X equals 2, leaving up Discharge for a Haste creature, and then we can pay 2 energy. And then we're hoping our opponent taps out again so we can get our Flage down. Opponent did not use Amulet, so they wanted to hang on to their energy, or they missed that interaction. Arcanist into Wizard's Lightning, that happens. So, opponent is tapped out, I can go Thrall plus Flage, but then there's still the Discharge problem. I guess with the Arena of Glory giving Flage haste, we're probably fine to just play it. And then, if I tap carefully... I might even be able to give the Thrall haste as well. So, step one, play Thrall. Because yeah, the Arena of Glory can potentially give two creatures haste if you spread out that red mana. And then now we can attack, deal with Arcanist. Add nine life with still uh, Discharge available. And now if they take out Flage with their own Discharge, we'll still be able to get it back out of the graveyard. Raptor also doesn't trigger with Thrall, and our opponent explodes. So yeah, a bit of a waiting game here, trying to sequence our Sweeper, but it kind of worked out in the end. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. We have Thrall plus Flage, Arena for Haste, so we're just missing a third land pretty much. Sign me up. Iteration can help find a land. And with Triome, Arena also enters untapped. Pwn under red-white. Keeps up Sacred Foundry. So, don't really want to Iteration turn 2, since then we end up wasting the extra card. Okay, maybe end of turn Thrall, or in response to an ETB effect, like an Amped Raptor. So this is perfect, especially if we can hit our third land. Should have specified untapped land. Okay, so Thrall may not survive to enable Null Drift or Flage next turn. Do we iterate anyways? Although I kind of want to play the tap land here, so we can maybe keep up Lightning Helix. Sure, we'll wait on iteration. So our opponent's not playing with Lurus, which implies that they probably have their own Flage. So if they play it here, do I Lightning Helix my own Thrall? That's a little drastic, but that might be necessary. Alright, just a Fable. 
that's acceptable. So we can Helix the Shaman token. Could also keep Helix for future Flages, so we can deal 3 plus another 3 is 6. And then for now we get to play maybe Hasty Flage or Null Drifter. Hasty Flage gets to take out another creature. Now let's not overthink it, let's just take out the Shaman. And then Hasty Null Drifter does sound appealing, making the opponent sack something. Hasty Flage takes out Raptor, gets our 6-6 six, six in play. Null Drifter has the upside of drawing me two cards, so then I'm more likely to be able to still play another three mana card next turn. So they both have their merit. But uh, let's go with uh, Null Drifter. And then using Arena. Found a lanes, perfect. And attack. And that's good enough for a concession, I'll take it. So yeah, I'm very impressed by this uh, Jeskai build. We got to see lots of early Null Drifters, and then a Torpor Orb and Thrall are just well positioned in the current meta, especially if you can dodge an opposing Flage entering the battlefield for free. So yeah, this deck has a lot of potential, and as another reminder, if you're watching this video on the day of release, make sure to tune in to the Arena Championship 6 Finals, which are happening right now on Twitch. That's twitch.tv forward slash magic. But for now, I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.